Hi, I'm Steven. You can now watch UCF TV 24 hours a day on Bright House Digital Channel 1. Coming up next on UCF Sports Night, a player from the past with a link to the present. We visit with former UCF basketball player Daryl Davis. Plus, it's time to hit the links again. We've got a preview of the women's golf team. All that and more right now on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. And by Syntex Homes, proud to support UCF Athletics. Hello and welcome once again to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. Thank you so much for joining us. With the spring semester underway, both basketball teams are now in conference play. But the men's team had one more tune-up before their big game against Memphis against a very pesky team as Holy Cross made its way to UCF Arena. Let's take a look at the highlights. The week began with the Knights taking on the Crusaders of Holy Cross. Again, it was not easy in the early going, but the Knights woke up after the break, further establishing themselves as a second-half team this season. Leading scorer once again was Jermaine Taylor, who racked up 21 of his 29 points in the second half on 11 of 17 from the field, including 4 of 8 from downtown. Also leading the way was Tony Davis, who made his living at the free throw line, going 14 of 16 from the strike and totaling 16 points. The Knights used a 17-9 spurt to start the second half to pull away and then slammed the door late. Final score, 70 to 57. UCF finishes the non-conference portion of the schedule with its fifth consecutive win and 12th straight at UCF Arena going back to last season. After their big win at home in the conference opener against Southern Miss last week, the women's basketball team was on the road this week for a pair of huge conference games. And how about the Knights? First, they go up to Memphis and get a monster game from Emma Cannon, 34 points and 20 rebounds, and the Knights roll in Tigertown, 85 to 67. Three other Knights finished in double figures. Asia Patrick had 15 points and seven boards. Jelly Mealing had 11, and Chelsea Wiley put up 10 as the Knights moved to 2-0 in the league. Then UCF traveled down to Birmingham to meet up with the Blazers of UAB and after a slow first half start, UCF picked it up in the second and came out of there with another W, 74 to 67 the final. This time it was Chelsea Wiley who led the way with 21 points, 18 of them in the second half. And Emma Cannon tallied another 14 points and six boards for the Knights. UCF shot 57% in the second half after hitting just 30% in the first. And the Knights are 3-0 in the league for the first time since joining Conference USA. Back at home at the arena Saturday was the big day. The men's team's conference opener against defending CUSA champ and national runner-up Memphis. And the largest crowd ever to see a UCF basketball game on campus. 9,825 people came clad in black to cheer on the Knights. And the Knights responded. Jermaine Taylor came out on fire against that tough Memphis defense. JT tallied 24 points on 9 of 21 from the field and had the highlight of the night right here as he gets out on the break and jams it over Tyreek Evans, helping the Knights to a one-point lead at the break. UCF also got another big game from Tony Davis, who's really turning it on of late. A double-double for him with 16 points and 10 rebounds. UCF busted out to an eight-point lead in the second thanks to JT, Davis, and A.J. Ramza, who performed admirably in the face of John Calipari's defense. But in the end, Memphis came up big late and survived the Knights and their fans at the arena, 73-66 the final. After the game, Memphis coach John Calipari had some remarkable things to say about UCF and the nearly 10,000 fans who came out to the arena. How about that crowd? I'm going to tell you, we played in Georgetown, better environment right here. This is like a jewel here that I don't understand why people aren't like, we're, this is our program, this community, this is our program. And, and I can't say enough that of, of all the programs in our league, this is the one that's about to, to do this. And all I would say to everybody in this community, I jump on now. 
It's um, energy that we'd love to have every ball game. And uh, you saw that the effort that our guys gave because of that um, energetic, enthusiastic uh, crowd. Meanwhile, the cheerleading and dance teams continue their preparations for the national championships, which will be held this week down by Disney. Head coach Linda Gooch and her team worked on their final preparations as they will try for their third national championship. The Knights have a bye to the semifinals on Sunday. Also, Night Moves is also getting ready for their national championship performance as well. Both teams perform before the crowds this week at the arena and look to be ready to go for nationals this coming weekend. And for more information on all of UCF sports, all you have to do is log on to www.ucfathletics.com. You are home for UCF sports 24-7. Stick around. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we take a look at a player from the past in men's basketball who has a very familiar link to a player from the present in more ways than one, too. Stick around. We're back in a moment. Fans join the men's basketball team Wednesday, January 21st as they return home for a conference matchup with Southern Miss. Tip-off at UCF Arena is at 7 p.m. Tickets are available by calling the ticket office at 407-UCF-1000 or by visiting ucfathletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Daryl Davis played on UCF's first ever team to make it to the NCAA tournament back in 1994. He's a UCF Hall of Famer and he's fifth on UCF's all-time scoring list. But that's about to change. Jermaine Taylor is right behind him in the UCF all-time scoring books and he'll probably leave Daryl far behind by the time his senior season is over. But that doesn't bother Daryl in the least. We show you why in our Sports Night Spotlight. Uh, I came in as a young freshman. Uh, Joe Dean recruited me right out of Tavares High School. Uh, my junior year was the year we went to the tournament for the first time, so that was a really good team. Yeah, I looked at them a lot because that was actually my first, uh, my first college game was, was here. I forgot who they were playing. I don't remember how we did because I was young at the time. I just remember him. Uh, coming out scoring uh, a lot of points and uh, ever since then I was like uh, that's when I knew I wanted to play ball in college. Luckily I ended up getting my degree. I got a degree in business management and I somehow I fell into the computer industry and started programming computers and from that point on, I kind of fell in love with computers. So I went back to school, got my master's in computer information systems. Currently I'm the uh, director at Valencia Community College for our decision support system. I knew Jermaine before Jermaine knew Jermaine when, he was, when his mom was pregnant, so I watched him grow up as a young boy. Um, and he's always been a respectful young man towards me and towards everyone in our family, so just to, just to watch him grow has been amazing to me, you know, just to see where he came from, you know, just knowing him as a baby and as a young teenager, as a young man, just to, to see how he has developed mentally, you know, more than physically in basketball. So I, I know him at that level, so we were very close. Early on in Jermaine's career, especially his freshman year and his sophomore year, although his sophomore year he may have averaged 12 to 14 points a game, he would have games where he would explode for 25, 26, and then I would call him and I would say, Jermaine, yeah, you had 26 points, but I noticed on baseline you didn't wait for the screen. On this play, you didn't wait for the screen. And being that I played for Coach Spiro, I knew the plays, I knew the system, like the back of my hand. So I knew when Jermaine wasn't in the game mentally and all the mental mistakes that he would make. Kind of helped me out my freshman year because I was getting a little frustrated. I wasn't getting that much playing time. Coming from uh, high school in AAU where I, I never sat on the bench until then when I was uh, sitting on the bench. So he helped me out. Uh, just told me to just don't worry about it. Uh, my time will come. Uh, let me know the thing that I was doing wrong and what I need to improve on. It definitely makes me proud to know that um, that he seeked my advice before he came here and that he's, he's coming here and kind of like I said, following my footsteps and to know that both of us were able to set a lot of records within school history and like I said before, I'm, I'm definitely proud of his 
physical ability, his basketball skills, but I'm more proud just to see how he has matured as a young man. All right, more to come here on UCF Sports Night. When we get back, we're hitting the links with the women's golf team, and we get a visit from head coach Emily Klein to talk about the spring. That and plenty more next when UCF Sports Night returns. Fans, UCF baseball begins its season February 20th, and season tickets are available now, starting at just $99. To order, call the ticket office at 407-UCF-1000 or visit ucfathletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. The spring sports are about to get underway and getting ready to hit the links, of course, are both the golf teams. And we are joined for the first time on UCF Sports Night by the head women's golf coach, Emily Klein. Coach, welcome to the show. So Thank glad you. to see you. Glad to be here. Tell me, uh, your team had a pretty good fall. What was, uh, how did the team look to you coming out of that uh, fall session? Um, we played really well. Um, coming out, I think we were, you know, we needed a little bit of a break, but overall we played very solid, played a very difficult schedule, and I was very proud of the girls for hanging in there. Our rankings got better as each week progressed, and the girls are playing very solid. Now you come into the spring. Who are the players that we should look out for on your roster this semester? Um, my seniors, Stephanie Connolly and Mae Tomenbang, are very solid players. Um, I think you'll see them playing really good this, this spring. We have a freshman coming in this spring also named Elise Aoki, who I think is going to be a great asset to the program. But overall, the whole team is, is um, really working hard and improving, and, and I think we'll all be something to look forward to. What was one of the big surprises coming out of the fall? You know, we just played a really solid fall. I don't know that we necessarily had any surprises. It was more of just putting together lots of good rounds and, and moving up the rankings, which is our ultimate goal. Tell me about, you know, you guys are getting back to work next week. You talked about the tough schedule that you had in the fall. We saw it. It was, it was pretty brutal. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't get any easier in the spring, does it? No, it doesn't. Our schedule is um, ranks one of the top schedules in the country. Um, we're going to start off at Kiowa Island. Um, and play a bunch of, that's probably going to be our weakest tournament, but it's still very strong. Coming back from that, we go to our home tournament where we have 16 of the top 20 schools in the country that will join us here in Orlando. And then it just keeps going. We're going to go to Texas and play at UT's tournament and then go to Arizona State and finish up with um, conference in Tulsa. So um, hopefully everything's good and then we'll um, hopefully get to go to regionals and nationals this year again. We talked with Coach Kleinert in the fall uh, around the time of the Isleworth tournament and he spoke to us about how big that was for his team. You talk a little bit more about that home tournament that you guys have here. Well, the home tournament is so important to our program. Um, you know, we get to bring in a lot of different teams. They get to see our facilities. Um, and we get to compete against the best. And in return, we get to go to a lot of other great tournaments. So it helps build our schedule and build the program and, and make us something that people notice. You guys have such an advantage playing here in beautiful, sunny Central Florida, don't you? Yeah, we do. The, the weather's awesome. Um, you know, it, it helps with recruiting, it helps with everything, and we're very lucky to be here, especially with the facilities that we have. All right, you mentioned facilities. You guys are sharing the new facility down the road with the men's team. Uh, give us an update on that and tell me how important it is to the program to have your own place to go. It's very important, and the facility is beautiful. We have um, four to six acres of short game area with two different putting greens and um, driving range, and then there, we're in the process of building a building that will have um, video equipment and everything. And it's um, really great for the, the men and, men's and women's teams to be able to call it home so that they can go out there and practice as much as they want and really improve their game. And we're looking forward to that coming online. Congratulations on having that come forward. I think mid-February you. you were telling me? We're hopeful it'll be complete in mid-February. The practice area is complete. We're just waiting for the building to be completed. All right. Head Coach Emily Klein, UCF <laughs> Women's Golf, thank you so much for joining us here on UCF Sports Night. Thank you so much for having me. The UCF family mourns the loss of one of our own. Former men's tennis player Sinan Sudas passed away in New York State just before the new year.
Sanan was a four-year letter winner for the men's tennis team. He was named All-Conference USA second team as a sophomore and was named to the Conference Commissioner's Academic Honor Roll as a senior. After completing his tennis career, Sanan worked as a student assistant in the sports marketing office while completing his bachelor's degree in business. All of us at UCF will miss an outstanding student, athlete, and most of all, friend. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. We'll get to our news and notes and top three plays in a moment. But first, it's time for a little Knights Talk with Keith Tribble. And in this week's edition of Knights Talk, we're talking about some of the new things for athletics alumni. So we asked Mr. Tribble, what is the Varsity Club? Well, the Varsity Club is um, uh, sort of a throw off to the Letter Winners Association. One of the things that I wanted to try to do was to get a chance to bring back our letter winners uh, to the campus uh, because a lot has changed and some of them went to school here. And so we uh, will be starting this spring a varsity club which will consist of all 16 of our sports. Uh, we'll have a president or um, a chairperson that represents each sport and they'll have a chance to meet uh, during the football season uh, as a group and meet uh, during uh, hopefully basketball season. And again, it's just really an opportunity to get all our letter winners back for not only maybe a football weekend, but also to celebrate their particular sports. And uh, right now it's being headed up by Art Slesnick, and Art is doing a great job. Art's been here for a number of years, uh, since uh, he knows everyone, and uh, we're looking forward to it. And if you are a former UCF athlete and you want more information on the Varsity Club, contact Art Zelesnik. He can be reached at his office at 407-823-2235 or via email at azelesnik at athletics.ucf.edu. Time now for some news and notes from the week. Congratulations to Jermaine Taylor. He's been named Conference USA Player of the Week for the second consecutive time. In three games against Penn, Chicago State, and Sam Houston State, Jermaine scored a total of 98 points in just 83 minutes. He followed up a career-high tying 34 against the Quakers with a new career high of 38 against the Cougars. Then against Sam Houston, Jermaine hit for 23 of his 26 points in the second half. He's currently averaging 23.7 points per game. That is eighth best in the nation. And in baseball news, head coach Terry Rooney's squad earned the highest combined grade point average in team history this fall. The Knights racked up a spectacular 3.2 team GPA for the fall of 2008, their first full semester under their new coach. The Knights also hope to get off to a great start on the diamond this spring. Their season begins February 20th with a four game home set against Virginia Commonwealth and season tickets are available. Time now for our Sports Night Plays of the Week, and a big week it was for men's basketball. Play number three against Holy Cross. It was a dunk fest for Jermaine Taylor, but this one was the best. The lob from Chris Baez, and Jermaine drops that one for a powerful two. Check it out again as Jermaine and the Knights get the win over the Crusaders. Play number two, sticking with the Jermaine Taylor theme here off the steal against Memphis. He gets the pass from A.J. Rapsa on the break and flushes that one down. Check it again as Jermaine sends the UCF Arena crowd into a frenzy with the big dunk right in front of the student section in the first half. But play number one belongs to you, the fans. A new attendance record for UCF basketball on Saturday as 9,825 people packed the dungeon to see the night's contest against the Tigers. So congrats to you, the fans, on getting top billing for our Sports Night Plays of the Week. All of UCF's teams are on the road as we look toward the week ahead. It all begins on Tuesday as the men's basketball team heads up to Birmingham to play UAB. Tip-off for that game is at 8 p.m. at Bartow Arena. You can listen on the Knights' flagship station, AM740 WQTM, or online at UCFAthletics.com. 
The game is also televised on CSS. Then Jermaine Taylor and the Knights head out west to Houston to play the Rice Owls. Tip for that game is at 4 p.m. And again, you can listen on AM 740 WQTM or online at UCFAthletics.com. The women's basketball team is also in action again. They've got their rematch with Southern Miss in Hattiesburg on Sunday at 3 p.m. You can listen to the action there on UCFAthletics.com. Friday and Saturday are huge days for the cheerleading team and the Night Moves Dance team. They are both competing in the 2009 College Cheerleading and Dance National Championships down at Disney's Wide World of Sports Complex. The cheerleaders are looking to win a third national championship. They have a bye all the way to the semifinals, which are on Sunday. Meanwhile, Night Moves will compete in the Hip Hop and Jazz divisions on Saturday, and the finals for those contests are on Sunday as well. Friday also marks the beginning of the spring sports at UCF. Men's tennis makes its debut in Oklahoma as they take on Tulsa. Action gets underway at 7 p.m. Meanwhile, women's tennis is a little closer to home. They travel down to Fort Myers to play in the Johan Creek Classic on the campus of Florida Gulf Coast University against a very strong field. It's a three-day long event from Friday through Sunday. And the track and field team season gets underway with a big meet up in Lexington at the Kentucky Indoor Invitational. That goes on Thursday and Friday. On Monday, check out the Kirk Spira Radio Show live from Rival Sports Bar and Grill on Alafaya Trail, just north of the UCF campus. Join Coach Spira and the voice of the Knights, Mark Daniels, as they talk UCF hoops every Monday at 6 p.m. And if you can't make it to Rivals, you can listen to the show on AM 540 WFLA. Then on Tuesday, join Coach and Mark for UCF Sports Today with Kirk Spiroff as we take a look back at the week in UCF hoops with plenty of highlights and features. The show debuts on Sun Sports at 4 p.m. and also airs Wednesdays and Fridays on Bright House Sports Network and all week on UCF TV. And don't forget, you can check out UCF Sports Night on Sun Sports, preceding UCF Sports Today every Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. You can also check out our show Tuesday and Thursday on Bright House Sports Network and all week on UCF TV. And for all the latest on all UCF sports, visit UCFAthletics.com, your home for UCF sports 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And as always, if you want to catch this episode one more time or you want to see any of our archived episodes of UCF Sports Night, you can anytime you want. All you have to do is log on to www.ucf.tv and click on UCF Sports Night. That is all for us for this week. For all of us here at UCF Athletics and UCF TV, I'm Jeff Sharon saying thank you so much for watching and go Knights! Hey, this is LT from 1011 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. You can find more great artists by going online at www.wjrr.com and also accessmag.com. And by listening to Native Noise each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. UCF Sports Night has been brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by... Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. By Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. And by Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life.